making art? That's okay, because I'm going to teach you how to make art now. Here's how you draw a face. Does this look familiar? Have you ever done this? I mean, ignoring the fact that my smiley face is so good. I'm, I'm sure everyone here has made a smiley face, so I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hands. Because you'd lie anyway. But that's really what you need to do. There's so many games made with super simple art, like, even if you're bad at art, you could probably spend a few days and make something that looks sort of like that. There's crayons in there. These are professional people getting paid to make games. And this is simple art. So, you're like, that's stupid. You're stupid. That's okay, because I'm going to teach you about juice now. Juice is the secret. So, this is like really cool but boring. You got a bouncing ball, and like, you can see it's a bouncing ball, but you're like, I don't want to play that game. If you add some just like basic animation stuff, this is squash and stretch. So you can see the ball squashing and stretching. Already looks so much fun. In games, you can also do things called particles. And particles are just things that make things look cooler. You can see them popping out at the bottom and sort of floating down from the top. And this is our, like, I would play this game. You upload this gift to Twitter and you're gonna get like 500 retweets. <laughs> and then there's all other kinds of things you can do to add juice. A lot of people like have a very defined thing for what juice is. For me, juice is like a lifestyle, okay? And it's basically taking something and applying all kinds of things that you have to like meditate about. And then you get like really cool results. So like color. You can change colors to communicate different things. Here, I'm communicating where the balls hit. Here's some examples of some cool juice. This is Thomas Was Alone, and it's just squares, so... No excuses! People paid for this game! <laughs> but it looks cool, because look at that little squashing and stretching going on. It looks fun. And it looks, it's like communicating all kinds of movement with the just simple things. This is a game I made, it's not very good, but it's got crazy juice. Uh, you can see I'm using all kinds of cool animations. See all these particle effects that are going on? See, it's a cool explosion. I'm using color in the background to like make that explosion pop more by darkening the sky. It really makes it look like that explosion is real and you're frightened by it. <laughs> this is a game called Downwell. It's like one of my favorite games ever made. And you can see like it's pretty simple pixel art. Pixel art's tough. Don't let it fool you. But it's very simple. It's like I, I do better pixel art than that. But this is an amazing game. And it uses particle effects so well to communicate things like I've reloaded my gun or I'm shooting my gun. Uh, it also uses color in interesting ways to highlight which enemies you can bounce off of because bouncing off of enemies is a really big part of this game. But enemies that are purely red are things that you need to shoot with your gun instead. Hello everyone, I am Nick T here from the Nextcast and I'm here at MAGFest today with uh, a new friend of mine who is named... Dan Lopatka. Dan, uh, it was really great seeing you at your panel yesterday talking about Final Fantasy. Um, gotta ask, what brings you to MAGFest? Um, I'm here because my fiance really wanted to go, uh, and I was like, well, you know, like everybody was telling me I would love it because not only is there cosplay and everything, but it's like specifically or more specifically like gaming cosplay and like, so, you know, I said, I started looking it up and I was like, oh man, I could give a panel and just nerd out for an hour and it'd be fun. So that's, that's why I'm here and I was able to do that and I'm thrilled to be here. Okay. And I mean, it was a lot of fun going to your panel yesterday. You were, uh, you were doing a panel on the music of Final Fantasy. I heard there was a little bit of a backstory to the panel. It wasn't intended to be all of Final Fantasy. <laughs> no. No. Absolutely not. Um, originally, it was, it was, I was just going to talk about Final Fantasy VI. Because it's the kind of thing where, where they ask you, they ask you uh, when you're first signing up to do it, like, what do you want to talk about? And initially, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to be super ambitious. I'm going to be super ambitious to talk about, like, this from one and this, you know, and just keep going through the whole thing. And I was like, 
I thought that would be cool. Then I was like, you know what? It should probably be just like, you know, in some ways I was like, this would just be easier if I just do six. I can just focus. And I showed, I, you know, I'm talking about it with my mom and Ari. And Ari's like, you can't just do six. Like, you, def you definitely can. And <laughs> she, was, she was like, but you told everybody that you were doing this, like, you know, you were, it was going to be all of Final Fantasy. You can't just pick six. And I uh, said, okay, fine. And in some ways it made it easier because there were some things that, like, I talked about uh, modal interchange. And th that it's hard to find an example or, like, a really good, easy-to-hear example for, like, people who don't know anything about music theory or anything like that. It's hard to find a good example in 6. But uh, it, in 7, there's just this perfect example right at the beginning of the game. So I was like, okay, this is... And people like 7... And then I was like, well, then I can use stuff for 10, and people like 10, and, you know, like, it just makes the life a little bit easier then. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, Nobuo Uematsu primarily did a lot of music in Final Fantasy. Um, were you thinking when you did the panel that you might want to cover some of the other things? I, I mean, I'm just a huge fan of Chrono Trigger, and it's oh, hard to, sure. hard to you know, not talk about that. I, <laughs> as, as much as, you know, I, here's the thing. For one, I'm just more, uh, like, Final Fantasy VI I grew up with. And like, you know, I have a brother who's four years older than I am. So when he was like, you know, maybe 12 or something like that, when Final Fantasy III in, in the States came out, he rent, he literally rented it from the, from like, I don't even think a blockbuster, you know, some, some other like Mom local place. Yeah. yeah. He rented it every week for like a year. And so, like, I, you know, and being the younger brother would just sit there and watch him play the game. So I just have this really, like, close connection with Six and that, specifically, like, that music. And, um, you know, when it comes to, like, Chrono Trigger and stuff, like, yeah, we played them, but, like, not nearly the amount, you know? So it's just, like, I, th I, I was thinking more of, like, what, what do I have the most connection with? What can I most easily talk about without having to, like really dig into stuff I've never heard before or that I haven't heard as much, you know. Um, you mentioned at the panel being a musician. I think you said you were a bass player? I'm a bass player, bass player. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. What kind of sparked your interest in music? I, was it Final Fantasy? Was it something else? I mean, that'd be a great story, but, like, honesty is more important. <laughs> my, when I was growing up, my mom is and was a music teacher. Uh, and so I've, I've been around music for my whole life and um, and so sparking the interest in music would just be my mom and and she actually she actually forced my brother and I to to play instruments it wasn't really like you know a forcing kind of a thing but it was just kind of it just kind of happened that way she was like she said to my brother you know like what instrument do you want to play and he picked drums and being the younger brother I was like well I want to play the drums too and she, so she took me, she took me to uh, his drum teacher, and she's like, well, your hands are too small. So, and folks at home, I don't know if you can see my hands, but they're certainly, they're certainly not too small. But, <laughs> but so I, jokingly, jokingly, kind of just like out of contempt, I was said, I said, well, I just want to play the big violin. Okay. okay. And, and so she said, fine. That you were gonna. So when I was seven years old, she got me an upright bass, and that's what I've been playing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's what I've been playing ever since. I, I went and got my bachelor's degree in jazz performance. Went and got my master's degree in jazz performance, and uh, I've just been. That's what I do uh, professionally. Um, but like out of, for composition, you could you could probably link that to Final Fantasy. Like if you if we were like going like specifically composition. Uh, when I started having an interest of doing video game music, I just like was like, well, I want to do what Nobuo Ematsu did. That's what I want to do because, like, that music is incredible, and it had such. Uh, I have such a strong connection to it. I want people to have a connection to the music that I write like that. You know, in a, in a you know, in a, in a very like look. You know, I look up to what he's done so much. It's like you know. I, I don't think people are going to have the same connection, you know. Yeah, but yeah, that's fair. But you, you're that's that's the goal. You know what I mean? So, so I think uh, hopefully that answers the question. No, that, that's really helpful. You gave a lot of different tips at the at the panel, and I don't remember if I recorded them, so it'll be a surprise for both of us. It'll be a surprise. Um, but you had a lot of 
information about composition, about music theory, about things like that. What advice, and you also mentioned that you compose music for games, you actually just mentioned that. Um, what advice would you give for somebody who's interested in getting into that space? Sure, so I think there's, I think there's a couple different approaches with that. I think part of it is like, you know, learning how to compose, you know, how do you, how do you learn to compose? And, and as, as I said in the panel probably like too many times, it, it's re a lot of it's learning to listen and, and learning to listen critically and to understand uh, why you like something as opposed to just liking it. Like we talked afterwards and I said something along the lines of, you know, we all know how to listen to music and emotionally and say whether we like this thing or we don't like this thing. But we don't have any idea as to why, most people don't have any idea as to why they like A and not B. And, and so part of that is, you know, listening critically and understanding that like, like oh, okay, oh, I, I like the harmony right there, or I like where the melody goes right there. And just understanding the different, you know, the actual pieces that make up music, which is music theory, really. It's just under, giving names to what you can already hear. Um, so just learning to listen, that's, I mean, that's a huge part of it. And then more like practically, like how do you, you know, what equipment do you need? How do you get a job and stuff? Um, uh, learning just to use MIDI, um, writing out stuff on your computer, because that, that, that's a huge part of it. Um, like uh, uh, GarageBand works great. I have friends who use GarageBand and that, they have a MIDI editor and, that's, and most people have that. There's also a lot of free options. I don't know all of them off the top of my head, but there's a lot of free options online. Um, uh, if, if you need, figuring out, um, finding good samples. So a, a sample, you're probably hip to samples at least a yeah, little right, bit. It, it's, like if you have a MIDI instrument, it, it's like it, a sound file or something, but exactly. if you have a, a, a sample, then it's like, this is supposed to sound like a real instrument. Exactly. So it, it actually, yeah, so, so you have virtual instruments, and the virtual instruments use samples. Uh, uh, you, have, you buy sample libraries, or you download sample libraries. And so just finding good samples is like a huge part of it. Because um, if you can find a good, if you can find like really good solid samples, you can write something that may not be like the bomb, but it sounds like it's the bomb. And a lot of a lot of people aren't necessarily looking for like like a Nobuo Ematsu level composition. They're just looking for a sound, you know. Um, and then and then beyond that, then like finding work or like finding like how can I get into the to the gaming industry? Like a lot of it is if you just start looking up like developer forums, at some point you're gonna see a you're gonna see a thing that says like looking for music for this new game. And it's usually the last thing that they do. So it's just like, if you, if you uh, bum around on those forums, a lot of times you'll find something. Like for me, I didn't, I didn't go that route entirely. I actually had a friend who, who had done that, but he, he was working for this company and he did a video game with them. Uh, and then he was gonna do a second game but like he just ended up not having the time or whatever. So he hit me up and he's like, hey, I know you know how to write in this style. Do you think you would want to do it? And, and actually it was pretty funny because he was first like, okay, you can just write the stuff. I'll, I'll arrange it, I'll do everything else. I just want you to write the stuff, send me the MIDI. I'll, I'll put all the different instruments to it. I'm like, great. And then he's like, okay, well maybe you could do a little bit. And like every week, it got to be less and less until finally he was like, "Okay, do you just want to do the whole thing?" <laughs> you know? mm. and, yeah, and so it was kind of it was kind of frustrating because because I I purposely hadn't written stuff for a few levels because he'd already written stuff for them, but I was like, but I was like, well, if he's gonna if he's gonna jump ship, I don't necessarily want him to you know no no offense to him, but I just like I would don't want his name to be on it too, you know having like, oh, two songs and then I did the other 20. You know, it's like, I think I'll just write something new for those two songs and go from there. It made more sense to me. Maybe that's kind of a dick move, but to me it, was, it just made more sense. Um, you're, uh, you said on a couple of occasions how you didn't really expect anyone to show up to your panel and were wonderfully surprised. I really uh, was. Do you have any plans for other panels at other conventions? You know, um, we, we we honestly talked about it last night um, um, after we got back to the hotel room. 
And like here, when I, I want to come back here next year, and what I really would like to do is two panels. And um, what I'm thinking right now, now obviously this might change over the next year. I'm not holding you to any of this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but what I'm thinking right now is to do one panel on a different composer, like do kind of a similar like thing that I did with Nobuo's uh, uh, compositions, um, but just um, but just a different composer, whoever whoever that may be. But then what I'd really like to do is do a deep dive into one piece from a, from a, from like Final Fantasy VI or something. Like just do Dancing Mad. Like just the whole hour, hour and a half or whatever, just that one piece of music. And I think that that would be really cool because then you could really dig in to all the different things that are happening. Or like there's one from Seven. I think it's called Battle on the Bridge or something like that. That was, that was the one that was mentioned last night with all the, it's like this has everything in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think that would be like, something like that would be really cool because you can then, you could, I knew there are leaves, there are leaves <laughs> falling in doors. <laughs> but, um, but I think something like that could be really cool where we're actually, you know, just diving deep into one specific song or one piece from a thing. Um, but that's kind of the idea right now. Um, but I, I do want to, I figure now that I've done one here at MAGFest and now I can like, if I contact another, another you know, place, I can say, hey, I did this thing at MAGFest. I'd love to bring it to your convention and do kind of a similar thing that I did. And, I, and, and obviously, I mean, there's some things that uh, at, from last night, there's like, oh, okay, I could improve upon blank and blank and blank. So it will probably evolve as time goes on, but you know, I'll keep it posted. I'll let you yeah, know. No, definitely. I'll let you know what I do. <laughs> we'll be hyping it up alongside everybody else. <laughs> if people wanted to find out about um, your appearance that happened this this weekend or potential future appearances, um, or just, they just want to learn more about music theory or anything about you, where where could they do that? Sure. So um, everybody can find me on YouTube. I have my YouTube channel is called Music on the D Lo, and Lo is just spelled L O, as with my last name. Um, so music on the DLO, or you can search my name, Dan Lopatka. Uh, I'm sure Nick will throw in yeah, some sort of link here, at the bottom. Right, I don't know where it is. Over it's here, somewhere. over here. Um, uh, you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter, uh, at music on the DLO. Same, same thing. Good branding, you know. Yeah, you got it. You, you got, got it, you got to have it across. Um, but uh, I post, a, I post a fair amount on Instagram, Twitter. I, you know, I, I dabble. I dabble on Twitter, but I like Instagram because I can actually like, I can post a video of me playing some something on, on bass or something like that. So I, I, I enjoy that medium a little bit more. Um, and other than that, you know, <laughs> if, 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 if you meet me, at, you can have me on Facebook. <laughs> like, that's cool. I don't necessarily want, you know. So you can message me on Facebook. Messaging me on oh, Facebook. That's a thing. Have a blast. Yeah. Go right ahead. Cool. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us, Dan. Hey, thank you. Yeah, cool. Here we go. Hey.
Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to a very special Over the Next Cast. Why do I keep doing this? That's not how we do the show anymore. The first thing I'm going to start with is, what did you expect when we were coming to MAGFest? Well, uh, the description for MAGFest is a video game and music convention, so I'm pretty sure that's what I expected. I kind of expected not to have anything that interested me. There were a few things, uh, not a ton, but there were a few. Uh, it was okay. It was better than I expected. Not amazing, but better than what I expected. But I don't really like video games. But there was some cool music. A little bit differently from you. Um, I didn't come in with low expectations, but I also wasn't sure what to expect. Uh, I expected there to be a lot of video game stuff. I expected there to be a lot of music stuff. And it turns out I was not disappointed. There have been several occasions where we've run across people doing jam spaces. There's like a dedicated jam lounge. What, do you remember what it's called? Um, jam Center? Jam Center, something like that. You know what? This is a thing that I probably should have looked up before we started talking. Jam Clinic, that's what it is. Yes, Jam Clinic. They have Jam Clinic, which is just a room that's dedicated to panels that are about making better music or practicing or whatever. Yeah. Um, so there was that. There's concerts. There's been multiple concerts that we have not attended because there's so much going on. Yeah. Um, that's just the music side of the thing. Gaming-wise, there's like, I think there's two game jams going on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's also been like a ton of panels related to gaming. There's Mages, which is MAGFest education series, yeah. which is stuff that'll be posted on YouTube. So I don't know why we recorded it, but we did record a bunch of them anyway. Yep, just for fun. Yeah. There's so many things going on. I didn't know what to expect. Let's go to some of the other questions. Okay. So first things I'm going to ask are, what was your favorite part about coming to MAGFest? I liked making some new friends, and I think I liked the arcade the best. Those were my favorite things. The arcade was really impressive because they had pinball machines, they had fighters, they had, you know, like you're in a paddle boat and, and you're... And it doesn't cost anything either, so you don't need to bring any money with you to the arcade. You just press the start button, which is really cool. Yeah, the arcade was really cool because you could do anything. There's all the games that you know, and then there's a bunch that you didn't. Yeah. We didn't get the chance to play a Sailor Moon beat em up Yeah, which would have been really cool. There's a lot of Japanese-style games as well. So if you've never played those and you want to, it's really great because you don't have to go to Japan. You only have to come to the United States, so that's not bad. Um, but there was lots of games, tons and tons of pinball. I really wanted to play the Guardians of the Galaxies pinball, but it was always busy. Um, there were bubble games, there's fighter games, there's shoot 'em up games, there's jet games. Um, there, was an, there, there was an Azumanga yeah. Dio like bubble pop game. What was the Poyo? No, the Poyo Pop game was just a Japanese game that we yeah, played. Yeah, just a general Japanese game. Yeah. Um, there is lots of music games as well. So drums, um, I think there's Guitar Hero somewhere in there. Yeah, Guitar Hero. Lots piece. of dancing. So if you like playing in arcades and you don't want to pay any money, come to MakeFest. You will not be disappointed. The thing that I would say was my favorite was Mages um, and the forum because there were opportunities for people to educate about gaming, about video gaming, about board gaming, yep. about leveling up your life. I don't know. I'm probably going to check out some of the mages programming after we... Sorry, there's somebody dying in the background. Like, who knows what's going on here? It's, it's been crazy. Yeah. That was my favorite part. Mages, definitely. Yep. What were some of the things that you noticed here that you haven't seen anywhere else, Lulu? Probably the constant musicians in the hallways. That is really cool. That you don't see at many conventions. Um, I was also surprised to see how many people um, knew about roughly where um, Canadian cities were. <laughs> I was very impressed with that actually. And we did meet a fair bit of Canadians, so that was really cool. Um, and we've met some like really just generally interesting individuals, whether musicians or gamers or people who are doing gaming. Yeah, generally the people have been quite interesting. Yeah, I would say, the, like you said, the special feature of this is that intersection of, of music and gaming. Mm -hmm. Jam spaces, there were like three or four different events, like yeah. somebody live at the Belvedere, which yeah. is like a, a lounge, which looks out over this crazy 
area behind us, which would look out over the river if it was nice outside, yes. but it's miserable because it's winter. Yeah. Aside from the jam spaces, there were like ga a lot of games that were public. There were concerts. Yep. There's like multiple concerts of people yep. that I don't know, but will probably listen to, except for I think I saw Hyper Potion, which is somebody that Wizard I favorited. Rock. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's Wizard Rock. There's the Megathon. There's a Mega Man Megathon going on right now that we talked about on one of the podcasts. And you can be part of it, which is cool. So I'd say the special feature is like what you said, it's the, the, is the music and the people, yeah. yeah. Real talk, you are interested in MegFest, or you're not, I don't care. You're watching this on the internet, you'll make up your own decisions. But we're gonna try to persuade you one way or the other. So if you had to make your decision, you had to make a, your mind up on whether or not to go to MegFest, why would you say that you should come to MegFest? You should just come to MakeFest to give it a shot. Even if you just come once, I probably will not come again unless I am a panelist uh, because they reserve a room for you. You still have to obviously pay for it yourself, but they do reserve a room in the hotel for you, which would be really great. I would just come give it a shot because I didn't really think I would enjoy my time at all. And I ended up finding a few things that I did find enjoyment in. So I would just come give it a shot if you really hate your life, don't come back. That's as easy as it goes. But give it a shot. You, it may surprise you. So you're on team, just do it. Like, just, just literally just give it a shot. Because I gave it a shot and it was okay. So okay. it's pretty good. That's fair. I, I would say a big plus, uh, not on Lulu's list of just give it a shot. Um, and I'm not throwing away my shot. Uh, is the music. You like music and video games? Be here. Yeah. That is something that I don't think you will find anywhere else you might find some musical stuff you might find concerts but you won't find anything like you did here if you want to get connected to a whole bunch of people yeah. that you didn't know were famous because yeah. video games are weird come to magfest we ran into like two or three people who if they aren't in the video game industry they know a bunch of people in the video game industry and i wouldn't have known that um no. it's a really cool way to meet connections you want to learn how to make video games do that there was like a museum, like, I don't know. If you, why would you come here? Because you love video games and video game music or learning about video games yep. or you're a gamer. Like games, 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 games. Yes. Games, 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 games. Yes, and another plus side is too, if you are not living in the States, it is a really short trip from Ontario, uh, from Toronto. It's about an hour and a half on the flight. So you can leave the morning of like we did of the Thursday and you can get here by, I think we were here by like one o'clock. So you still don't, you don't even lose that much time. We are leaving tomorrow morning. So we are losing the Sunday, but you still end up with pretty much a, almost a solid three days. The programming does go a bit later. So if you want to give an American convention a shot, just come to this one. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. Oh yeah, it's also four days of programming. So none of this Friday to Sunday, like two-ish days. You've got like yeah. three full days and then the Sunday. It is so much programming. There's so many things that we didn't get the chance to see that probably would have been great to see. Mm -hmm. um, we're probably gonna miss out on like Super Battle Magfet. You know what, I don't even know. There, there were so many things we missed out on the schedule because there's two of us. Yeah. There was a, a cabal of us, if there was a group of us, here, we could have like divided and conquered, but we couldn't. So yeah, another why is there's so much going on. Like I've said that about Anime North, but I'm not kidding. There's so many things going on here. Yeah. Uh, the obvious follow up to that is why not come to MAGFest? Why should you stay away? Uh, if you're really into anime itself and manga and cosplay, don't come, there's not much. But if you want to, make a change and add that, then come. Um, I think if I come next time, I'm going to try to make a change so that there is more cosplay in uh, MegFest because people who like video games still want to cosplay as their favorite character and they still need to know how and that would be really great. Um, the level of cosplays to normies on Saturday is a little bit better, but during most it is a lot more just normies than cosplayers. So that'd be great if we could affect that change. But it, yes, if you really are like cosplay is amazing, you will not like this convention. Yeah, I, I would have to echo that. Um, if you, huh, this isn't really a negative, but it's worth 
mentioning. Uh, if you can't get a room at the con, it is harder. Um, we like trying to do some interactive interviewing and things like that. And it's just harder because you have to either lug around a bunch of stuff. There was no co-check this year. Maybe they'll change next year. Maybe maybe there'll be some enterprising con goer who's like, hey, my room is now room check. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, that's, that's a small downside. I wouldn't really put it against the entire con. No. Um, I would bring a separate bag, though. Um, even like a wheelie bag. Like, I've been carrying around our backpack um, and... We've had two winter coats in my backpack, and my back is killing me. So I would recommend some kind of wheelie bag. You may look like a capital D, but you know what? You're saving. You're saving your back. You're saving your orthotics. Uh, bring really good shoes too, because um, if you're not in panels, your feet are gonna hurt. It's all over the place. So bring really good shoes and a rolly bag if you're not in the convention center. I think those are our general con things, but like. For MAGFest specifically, I would agree with Lulu, like, the lack of cosplay is kind of unfortunate. I got this cool camera and there was lots of people to take pictures of, but, like, there's not the same amount of people cosplaying. And there's there are definitely less events related to that. If you are more of a broad nerd, if you're a tea nerd, you know, you've got some deep knowledge on a particular yes. fandom and you know our interest in a lot of fandoms. There's a little bit less of that because there's the music and the gaming, it kind of balances out. But if the, neither of those are in your wheelhouse, you're just, you're, you're kind bored. of, you're, you're, gonna be you're bored. bored. Yeah. You're going to be bored. So I would say like somewhat obviously, if you don't like gaming or music, then like this is not for you. But if you have any interest in either of those things, it's probably fine. Yep. If you're here for cosplay, it's a little bit less. It's so lacking. I can't think of too much else that is like a, why not come to MAGFest. Yeah. I mean, Probably, if you're not in the north uh, northeast United States, I don't know. The value is pretty good, but flights can be expensive. Yes. I don't know. That's always like a just a straight up math decision. Do you have the cash? Do you want to yeah. do that? I would say it's worth the value because there's yeah. so much programming. Yep. It's worth the value, definitely, but it is a hike. Would you come again next year? Uh... Unless no. I'm on a panel and I get a guaranteed room, probably not. Um, or unless I'm just booking um, cosplay photo shoots with American photographers, then I would just come literally to the hotel to do pho uh, photo shoots because it is a beautiful hotel. But other than that, if I don't have any large costumes planned that I want to take photos of or I'm not on a panel, I will not be coming. I think I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to wrangle uh, G and Z and oh. Evan and Carolyn and yeah. most of the next cast family. Sorry, Chloe. I just don't feel like, just like with Lulu, I don't think this is your thing. But maybe if Lulu comes, then both of you can like make a cosplay empire and rule all of MAGFest yeah. with like Sarah as like helping out. Yeah, and... it would be nice if we could get our other friends that we met today that are cosplayers as well. If we could get a co some more programming in, I think it would be worth it. But if we can't get a team on deck to help with that, it's not going to happen. Change will not happen. Uh, are there any closing thoughts you'd like to say about MAGFest? Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Just give it a shot. Yeah. I'm with Lulu on this one. I don't have any closing thoughts, but I do have some shout outs. Um, I'm going to screw up people's names, so I'm just going to use the first names. And uh, if I'm smart, I'll put them down below. But shout out to Dan for taking the time to... Dan was great. Dan was great. Dan uh, was great. Uh, as you might have already seen, Dan did a panel on the music of Final Fantasy, in particular uh, Nobuo Uematsu. Uh, so thank you to him for doing a short little interview with us and for doing an amazing panel, uh, which is great music theory if you don't know music theory. Yep. Um, shout out and, to... Oh. And I think if you're interested in Dan's um, PowerPoint, I think Nicholas has his contact for his social media, so you can just send him an email and he I think he will send you the PowerPoint if you're interested in what his thing was about. And I also think they recorded his thing as well for mages, so you may even be able to find Dan's actual presentation, which is really great. So have that a look as well. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Ari uh, and Michelle, uh, who are some really cool cosplayers who mm -hmm. were also, like Ari is Dan's fiance, yes, but, but like a bunch of cool people that we met, shout out to Sarah and Raf for once again intro introducing us to some cool people because we're we're introverted. I'm just not good at that, but I really appreciate the help. Um, I wish I remembered all the panelists. Maybe I'll list them below. 
but thank you to them for the amazing panels on networking, on um, black women in gaming, um, t on game design, on how to develop a game, like Game Developer Bootcamp. Yeah. Oh my goodness, there were so many panels that uh, we went to. The gaming diversity ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I should say gentlemen and ladies, they were, one, you were wonderful, uh, and you brought up some really great points. That's also another thing, if you need to figure out how to talk to people, and you are a bit more introverted about things that are not okay to like, to like, if you have a friend that is, sometimes says those questionable things. There are things here at MegFest to help you with that. So if you want to learn more about that, it come for that as well, so. And uh, I've forgotten a number of people, but I'm gonna do my best to remember them in the description. But the one person I also wanna thank, the many people, is also thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed watching this, you can check out some of our other convention coverage, some of our other things that we do. Uh, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash thenextcast. If you don't know where we are, everything can be found at thenextcast.com or any social media on the next cast. Thank you very much.